if you're new to FreeDOS, you might be wondering, how do you install it? And you don't actually have to install FreeDOS on real hardware. You can actually install FreeDOS in what's called a virtual machine. A virtual machine basically uh, is software that runs on your system that pretends or emulates another uh, platform. So you can actually install FreeDOS inside this virtual machine without messing up your host system. And that's that's why I really like to uh, use FreeDOS in a virtual machine and a lot, of the, a lot of other people do too. A very popular virtual machine is a system called VirtualBox. And that's what we're using here. So we're gonna install FreeDOS 1.3 on Oracle's VirtualBox. To get started, I'm gonna click new and that'll allow me to define a new virtual machine. You note that the defaults are a type of Linux and version of Fedora because I happen to be using this on a Fedora Linux machine. If you're running a different platform, you're probably gonna get some different defaults there. But that's okay, because it's gonna change as soon as we enter uh, FreeDOS up here in the name. So once I do uh, FreeDOS, in the name, uh, VirtualBox has detected that that's DOS, and so it's changed the type to other and the version to DOS. It's also changed the memory size down here. So the memory size is now 32 megabytes, and that is perfectly fine for DOS. DOS does not need a ton of memory, so 32 megabytes will be just fine for us. And so our next step then is to create that virtual hard disk. Now the virtual hard disk is basically where you're gonna install FreeDOS. It's a hard drive that doesn't really exist except through software. And that's what we're gonna to use to install FreeDOS. FreeDOS doesn't need a ton of storage. And so it's given us a default of 500 megabytes, which is actually these days, not a lot of storage. And so that'll work just fine for us. Uh, I have the options of these different hard disk uh, types, VDI, VHD, VMDK. These are different ways that you can define a hard drive image, uh, image file in a virtual machine. We'll just keep the default here of a VDI. Uh, you can use dynamically allocated or you can use fixed size. I don't think it really matters, but I use some other tools outside of this that makes it a little bit easier if I use a fixed size disk. I also think you get a little bit better performance if you do everything as fixed size. So we'll click create. And now we've got a new virtual machine that's been defined ready for us to install FreeDOS. But we can't actually boot this. If we click the start button here, actually nothing will happen because the virtual hard drive is completely empty. It doesn't have a hard, an operating system installed on it yet. So we need to uh, connect to this, the FreeDOS 1.3 installer. And so we're gonna do that down here with optical drive, right? So where it says IDE secondary device zero, it says optical drive, and that is currently empty because we haven't actually told it where to find the FreeDOS install image. So on our website, you can download the uh, fd13live.iso image, and that's our installer that you can use. It's just a, the ISO means it's a CD-ROM install image. Now, I've done another install on this before, which is why it's giving me the option here to uh, just go ahead and, and use my previously selected uh, ISO image. But how did I get there? Well, I, I did that by, by choosing a disk file. And so over here, I can now select uh, in my home directory is where I have it located. And there is my FD13 live, that's the, the live install image. And I've selected that and now I click select. And now down here under optical drive, it says fd13live.iso. And one other thing that I wanna do is set the boot order. So we don't actually have a floppy drive on this virtual system. And, and while I don't think it'll cause a problem, I, since we don't have one, let's just go and unselect it. So I'm gonna unselect floppy here. And so that means that the boot order is going to be uh, optical because that's the first one that has a check mark next to it. And then if that doesn't exist, it'll it'll try the, the hard drive. And so the optical being first is the important thing here. We'll change that later on, but let's go ahead and start with optical first and then hard drive. And now that that's the order, I can now click start and that will boot my uh, installer. And so here's my install. Let's go ahead and make the uh, view a little bit bigger. So I'll just do view virtual screen one and we'll change that to double size and that'll make it a little bit bigger so we can all see what's going on. Now I can use the first option here that's been selected to boot in the live environment mode. That means I can run FreeDOS uh, live without actually installing it. Uh, and that would work just fine. There's actually a way to, once you're booted in there, to go uh, into the installer program. We'll actually do that as, in a second. But another way to do this is to actually go down here and say install to hard disk. And that 
basically does the same thing. It boots the, uh, the FreeDOS installer uh, and then immediately goes in the install program. We'll use that in a second when we can, when we, we're going to have to reboot. So we'll use that when we come, when we come back after the reboot, but just to show you, you can do it both ways. Let's go ahead and start by uh, use FreeDOS 1.3 in the live environment mode. And so what that's going to do, it's going to boot uh, FreeDOS in what's called a live uh, image. And so that way everything in here is running off the CD. And I could use FreeDOS at this command line. I could absolutely use FreeDOS here and try it out and I could uh, run other programs, but uh, the one thing I want to do is run the installer, which is that setup.bat. And so I'll just type setup and that'll bring me into the install program. And so what's my preferred language? I'm going to use English. And so I'll just hit enter on that. And then you get this little friendly warning that reminds you that you're about to install a complete operating system. Now, if this means a lot if you were going to be installing FreeDOS on actual hardware and you already had an operating system on your on your on your computer uh, installing freedos depending on what you do could actually damage the other operating system that's installed on there if you're installing this on on a real machine we're installing this inside a virtual machine and so we're actually safe here and so we're just going to say yes continue with the installation so we'll hit enter and the c drive because we created that virtual hard drive image uh is not partitioned it was created as a as an empty drive and a partition just means it's been carved up so that way DOS can use it and we need to do that first so I use the arrow key and go up to yes partition the uh, drive C and hit enter and it's going to automatically partition my hard drive for me now free DOS like any DOS will only recognize the partition table when it boots up and so uh, changing the partition table while the system is running you need to reboot the system when we're done so I'm going to say yes reboot now so just hit enter and that will reboot the system now remember before we had gone into the live environment mode and typed setup and that was just to show you that you could you could run the setup program from the live environment but the other way you can install it is to go down here and say install the hard disk so i'm going to move down there and hit enter and that will go back into the installer it'll boot the system immediately and then go right into the installer so again select my language as english and yes, I want to continue with the installation. So hit enter on that. And we've uh, partitioned the C drive, but we haven't actually put a file system down on the C drive. We need to do that by formatting it. And so this is the option to format the C drive for you. And so we're going to go up with the arrow key and say, yes, please erase and format drive C. So hit enter on that. Doesn't take very long. There it is. It's all done. And hit any key to move on does a little bit of stuff at the beginning here and then it asks you for your keyboard layout I'm using a US English keyboard so I'm going to hit enter on that and then what do you want to install we have these different options where you can do a full install which is the default uh, and that includes all the applications and games on the system you also have the option to install source code because we're an open source software project we want to make sure that you have the source code there as well you can also install a plain DOS system. Just using the arrow keys, you can go up here and do the plain DOS system. And that gives you all the programs that replicate just the bare bones of a DOS system, a classic DOS system. And of course, you have the option to do source code for that as well. Because we're just doing a demonstration, let's go ahead and do a plain DOS system. So I'm going to hit enter on that. And now we have the option to start the install for FreeDOS 1.3. It's sort of our last chance. And I'll go ahead and say yes uh install freedos 1.3 and it does a couple of things at the beginning and then it goes ahead and installs all the packages which not very big for if you're just doing the plain dos system so it doesn't take very long and so there it is all of our uh, packages have been installed it does a couple of things after the fact and then it gives us the option to now reboot the system so let's hit enter on reboot now and this will bring us back to the CD-ROM boot screen, right? Because that's what we had at the beginning. So this is our CD-ROM boot screen. Uh, and if I, if I use this first option, uh, I'll just go back into the CD with the live environment. That's not what I want to do because I just did the install. I actually want to go down here and say boot from system hard disk. And that'll actually boot the system from the C drive. Now, there's a way to make it always boot from the C drive, and we'll get there in a second, but let's just go ahead and, and hit enter on this and see that we are actually booting from the C drive. And so there it is. There's FreeDOS booting from the C drive. We've now installed FreeDOS 1.3 on VirtualBox. 
Now we want to make sure that every time we boot the virtual machine, it's always booting into FreeDOS off the hard drive. And so to do that, we need to modify the virtual machine just a little bit. And so I'm going to just enter shutdown and that'll obviously shut down my virtual machine. And now we can go and configure the virtual machine in VirtualBox. And so up here where we had boot order, let's go ahead and click on this optical comma hard disk. And that gives me the option to now change the boot order. Well, we've installed the hard drive. We always want to boot from the hard drive. And so I'm going to select hard disk and I'm just going to go up one. And that moves hard disk to the top of the list. Another way I could have done this is I could have unselected optical and that would have worked just fine as well. But the way that I'm going to do it is to, uh, have hard disk just first in the list and that'll work fine. Click OK. And now if I click start, it will boot the virtual machine immediately from the hard drive. It's not uh, going into the uh, CD-ROM at all. CD-ROM is still defined, but we're not actually booting uh, from the CD-ROM. We're booting right from the hard drive. And that's how you install FreeDOS on VirtualBox. So what else would you like me to cover in this video series? Let me know in the comments below. Before I go, I have to thank everybody who supports me on Patreon. You really do make this channel happen. So thank you very much for your support. Some of you are sponsoring me at a higher level, and I want to thank you again, uh, especially here for that. So thank you very much. Visit our website at freedos.org. Join us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. And consider supporting me on Patreon. Thank you.